is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to the Mindless Horror Podcast. Uh, Queen Mary Dark Harbor Sliders takeover right here, man. This is going to be a fun one. I have interviewed like two people from Queen Mary, and I want to get more into the sliders, man, because these guys and and women, man, they, they go out there and they put on some of the best goddamn live performance I've ever seen in my life. Mm. And uh, I have to say 2020 was a very depressing haunt season for everyone, but I don't doubt in my mind when these – individuals come back they're gonna be a hundred and ten percent ready to go and just can't wait to get out there and scare you again um with me today from the slider team i have looney and i have cherry how are you guys doing today good good, good. oh my god I, I, I this is something i've been wanting to do for some time i i'm so glad that we finally got it um organized and everything and i know everyone's busy uh everyone's Doing something right now. I mean, hopefully staying busy because this pandemic sucks. But this is why we create these videos so everybody can enjoy it, have a good time, and we can reminisce on on the good times and and hopefully uh, make future memories uh, to come. So l let's just get into it, man. I'm 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 excited right here. Uh, what All right. what motivated you to wanna scare? I mean, this is something that I mean, every year you're bringing nightmares to life. You're bringing you're bringing the horror to life. You're bringing people like me go to these events excited every year. What made you want to get into this? Uh, yeah. So okay. for me, um, I grew up with my dad always, you know, scaring us and stuff like that. And then I first started getting into it uh, when I was in seventh grade. Um, my brother... And then Joe, he, um, Joe actually works on Forsaken Lake over in Knott's. Um, they did this event where this guy hosted a haunted house at his house to raise money for the band. Right. And we used to take food and stuff, you know, me and my mom to feed the kids who were working. And I saw what they did and my dad worked it. And so like, it sort of like piqued my interest. So I started working there a few nights and then I ended up going to, um, I used to go to the Boys and Girls Club off of a uh, beach, uh, right by Knott's actually. And one of the guys who ran it, he uh, he put on a little haunt for us. And so that sort of piqued my interest. And then ever since then, it just, it took off. And then the the, uh, the icons were born right there. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what about you? Uh, for, for me, it was like my stepdad, used to be like a part of the military and on the military base sometimes they'd have like holiday parties and this one party was like um it was like a haunted house thing and they were just like anybody want to scare people and I was like I'll scare people and like we weren't supposed to like grab people or whatever but like I was a little child and I was like I get to scream at people like this is great <laughs> so I went wild and it was it was really fun and then I've always been to like cosplaying and theater stuff and I ended up meeting some friends who introduced me to like the slider team and stuff and it just kind of went off from there like I I kind of just the whole experience is in a weird way intoxicating <laughs> and it's just fun to like be creative and like also immerse yourself into like a really like spooky theme right. so yeah that's, that's that's how it worked out for me I mean uh, Queen Mary Dark Harbor, the first year I ever attended the event was actually in 2019. Um, mm. And I immediately, I remember going to the event and just falling in love with it. I, I liked the how different it was from other haunts that I go to usually. Um, it was its own kind of thing, and I, and I liked that a lot with the whole history of the ship. Um, and I, I always have a close personal connection with that ship because my great-grandfather actually was one of the people who came back in world war ii on that ship so really that's, that's so crazy cool. yeah so like that ship to me every time i go or see it like i just it, it has just a, a special love connection with it and just to think my grandpa was bringing nazi prisoners back on that ship was just something to always reminisce on when i think about that ship um so walking through mazes on the ship and, and just going through the event was just so fun for me that year i went I actually, I liked it so much, I went a second time that year because I, I, I just wanted to see it again. I just really want to enjoy 
and really take my time and go through everything. And I had the time of my life. Um, part of that too was actually watching. Uh, I remember watching the the the, the slider show, uh, which I remember not Scary Farm used to do back in the day, and they stopped doing it. And then mm. when I saw it was still happening in Dark Harbor, I was like, oh man, like. I remember the first year I ever went to Knott's, like this was something that I would watch because it was really cool. So seeing that you guys got to do that was really cool. And you guys are, I have to say, really, really fucking talented. Like, Thank you. Thank you. I appreciate it. <laughs> yeah, you guys, you go out there and you do some insane stuff. And I'm like, I cannot do that. <laughs> uh, but I, I, I really had a fun time uh, about, you know, going to that event. So you know, 2019 was my first year. What was the first year you guys ever went to Dark Harbor and you kind of knew, or any haunt at that matter, and you just, you really knew, you're like, oh, now I, like, I've done it and I've seen it in the outside. Now I really want to, I didn't know I can come and get paid to do it now. <laughs> um, for, for me, um, 2016, I actually was working at 17th Door, so going from that whole experience and then going with a group of friends from there and they were like hey let's go to queen mary in 2000 uh, you know and i was just like uh okay <laughs> like i don't know what this is and so we ended up going and that's when they still use the uh dome for intrepid and for a circus and i like fell in love with just the vibe they gave off and then we stopped to watch a slider show and that's when they were the uh iron workers and I met Squeaks and Evil and Kevin and like all those guys. And I like fell in love with what they did. And I realized there was only one female on the team. And I was really like empowered by that because I was like, oh, cool. Like she's with a bunch of dudes. Like, all right, like I can probably do that. So I ended up getting a pair of pads not too long after and I got invited by Joe to go to the rink and I went and I was like yeah I need to get my stuff done like and ready and so then at that point I just started sliding from there and then I ended up getting a message from Squeaks and he was like hey like we need people like you want to come over and audition and I was like yeah so I went over and auditioned and then Evil took me under his wing and I'm so I'm so glad for him you know to be there and take me under his wing and be my father figure in this sense. Love it. So, um, For me, the first like professional haunt experience that I ever had was actually at Six Flags in 2016. Um, me and my friends went to go on roller coasters and it's just when I think they had mainly like zombies. It was really cool because like all over the park they had like these TVs and they were like in an hour, like the zombies are coming, you better run. But like, you know, you're so as, as the sun was going down, it was really cool. Um, but believe it or not, the first time that I was ever at Queen's um, haunted like experience was the first time that I worked there. <laughs> um, that was the first time that I experienced it. There you go. Um, yeah, I, weird enough, like I didn't get super into the haunt community until I started being a part of it. Um, a year before, the year that I started working at Queen, I was curious about like being a scare actor. Me and my brother were like looking to actually maybe audition for Knots. Like we didn't know anything about it, but like we just thought like, yeah, that's a thing. Um, we were too late. And then through meeting people, I learned about Queen and I really, I also really enjoyed the fact that like Queen's stories were specific, like they, act, they were a thing that actually happened. Right. And they took that and like made it into a creative experience. And that's just, that's how it happened for me. I was like, all right, yeah. And it was, I'm honestly really, really grateful and happy that I did end up going to Queen because there's like a lot of flexibility and in, in like creative freedom. So yeah, that's, that's how it happened for me. Both of you brought up two good points that I want to touch on. One, uh, more women sliders. I think there should be a lot more women sliders out there. Anyone to just go out there and do it. I mean, they get so creative and crazy out there that it just, I think it makes for the one of the greatest haunt experiences out there. Yeah. Um, so I love that you brought that up because I remember watching an interview, I think, with uh, one of the members of Decade that they, they said they wanted more women to get out there and slide. And I was like, 
Yes, I agree with that. There's, we need to get more women out there because we do. Uh, I, I really feel like they have a lot to bring to the table. They have a lot of hidden talents out there that they can bring to the table. Um, the second one you brought up that I liked too, touching on Queen Mary, was the fact that they keep everything relevant to their lore and their boat. I remember yeah. the first year I ever went with back in 2019. Um, I, that was something that I really looked at and saw and loved a lot. Um, because I, I feel like it really immerses you into that experience of being part of the ship and being part of these stories. And it actually makes for a really creepy, uh, pretty much event and, and mazes when you walk through them. Because the fact that some of this stuff actually happened and mm. they make it kind of a little bit more, you know, horror and gory, which I like, um, is, is terrifying. I remember walking through the ship that knowing that it's haunted and then walking some, through some of these dark halls. And I'm just like, okay, is someone going to scare me or am I really going to get see like a ghost or something? Like there was just parts of the ship I, was, I remember walking. I'm like, this is just terrifying. I feel like I'm going to be watched or something like that. Yeah, it's like so crazy because you can ask a lot of the monsters, especially the ones who work in the mazes, like especially the Marys and stuff like oh, yeah. <laughs> Jackie, who is based off of Mary. Right. Um, like a lot of them have said like they're in their hallway and all of a sudden their wig is getting snatched off. Oh, like they're getting attached, like they're getting like touched and like pushed and they turn around and no one's there. Like yeah. Jackie does not like us impersonating her as Mary. Damn. My first Damn. year I was, um, I was in a slider. I worked on the ship mainly. I was in lullaby and then eventually I worked my way to being like a Mary, but it's, it's definitely weird. Like, when you're when you're in like the dark hall hallways alone and you're waiting for people to come through and you're just like mm, this is kind of spooky because like i don't know if there's somebody scaring with me like it's dope <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah i mean that ship that's something i've been wanting to do like when they ever whenever they open up again is is take the the ghost tour um because i'm just i'm fascinated in the history of that boat and that was one of the characters that i think both being a character and the story scares me the most to scary Mary because man, I mean that character in general is terrifying, but just thinking, I, I, if I'm not mistaken, they actually used to run the maze through the actual pool, right? At one point. Yeah. yeah so they did run it through the pool, um, but they did have to close it down due to the pool being really, really fragile because right. you actually were able to walk right next to it. And then they changed it where you're actually the floor above looking down into the pool. Right. And then they got rid of that at that point because it, the pool area is just so fragile. Like anything can happen. If someone throws something like it'll go right through the bottom of the pool. Damn. I mean, mm -hmm. just the fact that that pool though, I mean, I remember watching, walkthroughs of this event and people walking through that pool and i remember just seeing you know having seen the the uh the actress there and then having to see someone like that's that was just kind of a blackout with her there i mean i imagine just being in that room alone is just eerie as it is you know and then having to have someone with you i mean it makes me probably feel a little bit comfortable but um i personally i have to say uh when I went, like I said, the streets were probably one of my favorite things. I remember, for one, uh, be since I became 21, about like going on two years ago, I love drinking, and this is the event to do that. But I drink responsibly. So PSA to everyone out there, drink responsibly. Yeah. Thank you. Thank exactly. You. Thank you. <laughs> you're so drunk people who want to like punch you're like, oh, hold on. Yeah, no. Okay. Drink. If you're going to go to these events, drink responsibly or don't drink at all if you can't hold your liquor. Um, and please don't bring little kids if yes. you're coming to this event. That <laughs> is like, like if most little kids can handle it. <laughs> when people are drunk, especially parents, and they're walking around with an infant baby strapped to their chest and they're belligerently drunk, that's when I have an issue. Oh, yeah. No, I completely agree. I mean, Unless your child can handle the event, and which I have seen children just laugh their ass off at the event and have a good time. Yeah. Um, don't bring the child and don't drink responsibly. But I love – my favorite part was, uh, uh, for one, getting tokens because those are cool collector's items. But uh, two, I, I loved uh, getting – because we got to go into the VIP lounge. I loved uh, having a drink and then just watching – the streets right there. That was the, the best part of my night, I think, just kind of kicking back 
and just watching everyone uh, have fun and, and do what they do best. Um, what are some of the best uh, reactions you've gotten on guests as far as either making them drop something, making them piss oh, their pants? Like, oh, what are God. some of the best reactions? Because that was the one thing I was noticing while I was sitting up there was some oh, of these gosh. reactions of these people are just the funniest thing. If I could just <laughs> buy a ticket for every night and just sit here, I so would. Um, for me, well, on streets, um, I actually have my nose pierced. So when I'm out on streets, I usually have two safety pins in my nose. Right. Um, a lot of people think they're fake. Um, so when people would ask me for the tokens, I would obviously make them do something. Right. Well, I would either have them go and find my name because a lot of people, a lot of the monsters, they like to play pranks on people, you know, so they'll go and they'll give them a random name and come back to me. And I'm like, no. Um, but another thing was I would make them pull my safety pin if they asked me if it was real. Um, I had this lady come up to me and ask me if it was real. And I said, yes. And she was like, well, can I have a token? And I said, no, the only way you can have a token is if you pull them. And she goes, oh, okay. Like she's thinking they're still fake and she takes it and she pulls both of them and realizes my nose is going with it. Oh. And she turned around in the bush and just started throwing up. <laughs> <laughs> I think that was the best reaction I've ever gotten. That's hilarious. Oh my God. I mean, it, it, you know, it's funny and I'll, and I'll share my, my other story, but it's funny you bring that up. Cause I, I remember my buddy, this guy was going around getting money stapled to him. Oh my mm -hmm. god! <laughs> it was one of the one of the the scare actors and my buddy. I was down to do it. Like I didn't. I was like, this guy obviously can take the pain, so I ain't afraid to do it. But my buddies were so scared. They're like, if I give him five dollars, will you staple? I'm like, yeah, hell yeah, I'll do it. So uh, the minute they gave me the money, I just stapled it like nothing. Everybody looked at me like you're a fucking psychopath. I'm like, <laughs> maybe I, I don't know. I mean, it was it just he obviously could take the pain. So yeah. That I was... think watching watching one of our guys do it, uh, Danger D, I think the most he got, like, he obviously had, like, ones and stuff all over him, but stapling money, he actually, someone was like, I'll give you $200 if you let me staple it to your eyelid. He goes, all right. No! And he, st he stapled it, like, r like, obviously, he put it a little higher, like, right where your bone is at, like, not actually on your eyelid, and then I remember he came back backstage and ripped it off and was like, I got 200 bucks to let someone staple it on my eyelid. <laughs> Oh, that's still I was like, hurts. all right. Oh my God, right on the bone, man. Oh, yeah. I'm just thinking about yeah. that. Oh, and I mean, I felt un a little uncomfort just stapling it onto his body, yet alone on his eyelid. Oh, mm -hmm. God. Y'all, y'all are crazy over there, man. This is probably, that's why I think this event's so fun. Um, <laughs> Cherry, what about you? What is something that you got? Um, oh, okay. Oh my God. I was trying to think of like, so many stories but i finally okay so hold on um two things that i love before i get to the story the first thing is i love when people run from me because if you run from me i will chase you sorry that's how it goes that's fun the second thing <laughs> is um sometimes we scare people sometimes it's fun to like have fun with the guests also um my character is like based off of like a ballerina dancer so when they get the tokens usually I like make them twirl around with me or something and it's fun and we laugh and it's great. Um, but the best story that I can think of right now was actually not when I was a slider, but when I was in my first year in a maze and I had like this weird, it was in the ship and it was like this weird slide metal thing. Right. And it could climb up it. They like gave me a little rope and I had these like metal gloves. And so like people would pass by and I could slide down and scare them. Or I could like I could hit like really close to their head and like the noise would scare them. And I remember this like lady, sometimes guests come in and they're so cocky. This lady came in, she was like, This mace isn't even scary. I just want to like find the bar already. I'm so bored. And as soon as she finished her sentence, I went like this right next to her head and she lost her mind. <laughs> and she was like, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I will never do that again. I, you are so scary. And I was like, I looked at her, I was like, I will follow you. <laughs> it, was it, was, it was so amazing. Uh, uh, these, <laughs> are, my favorite scares. these are the days I live for. I love hearing stories from the scare actor's perspective because I could tell you a million stories from the guest perspective, but it's rare that you get to hear them from, the, from your guys' perspective, and I love hearing that. 
Um, another fun, and it weirded me out a little bit, but I thought it was like, okay, this is uh, this is why one of the reasons why I like the event. Uh, the first, I think, the first time we went when uh, we walked in, um, me and my buddies were trying to figure out what we we're gonna do, uh, and you guys may know them. I don't know. Two scare actors. Uh, they were both sliders. I know that much for sure because they were wearing knee pads and, and the gloves and everything. Um, one of them had a hat on, like a bowler hat kind of, it looked like, I think. Um, he has a dumb, dumb sucker in his mouth. And the other one's standing right there. And he uh, takes the sucker out of his mouth and p- points it at her. And then the other girl puts it in her mouth. And then they just walked away, and I'm like, all right, this is going to be a fun night. And I just kept walking. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah, like. Yeah, like, that- honestly, we do the dumbest shit there. Like, I would say, like, the dumbest thing I've ever done is I like to chase people who have sandals on. Nice. Oh. <laughs> I've licked people's toes. <laughs> I've bitten their sandals. Like, and try to pull their sandals off with my teeth. Like, and these people are screaming, like, no, don't take my sandal. And I'm like, fuck you. Like, I'm going to take it anyways. I mean, th- I mean, this, like, I when I say this event is way different from others, like, it really is. Like, I really, and that, and that's in a good way because a lot of the stuff I see you guys do, you wouldn't be able to get away at other events with. And I love, I love that. I mean, that's yeah. what makes it really fun. Um, Another thing that I liked on the streets when I when, something that I heard is someone had like a freaking train horn. Scary. Oh me. Yeah, yeah, Kyle. So that's one of our stilt walkers. He has it. Squeaks has it. Our girl Daisy has it. Our stilt walker. Um, yeah. So Kyle actually made them. Oh my god! Um, it's a car battery hooked up to whatever. I don't know how he makes it. But this thing is so loud and especially coming from a guy that's on stilts and he's like eight foot tall, like coming at you and you're just like, oh, okay, he's walking. Like, I don't know what he has in his hand. And the second he lets go of that, like squeezes that trigger, that thing is so loud. I've seen so many people drop to their knees because Mm -hmm. it's so loud and right in their face because they're on stilts. Sometimes it's groups of people that lose their minds, like that weren't even supposed to be They go running. They hear it, like they just... If they just disperse, they're gone. If I can they're, be honest, they scatter. I yeah. was one of those people that fell. <laughs> <laughs> so picture, picture this six foot six guy walking out of the freaking uh uh the circus maze, and that's the first thing that I hear, and I didn't know where it came from. I knew it was close, and I just <laughs> tripped on my foot and fell to the floor. And I'm like, and all my buddies oh were like, "What gosh. the hell happened?" I was like, "I heard something loud, and it." I lost balance. And you I fell. you probably heard it from Squeaks because Squeaks is usually over by Circus and he had yeah. one too. So yeah. that's probably where you heard it from. I, I just remember like it scared the shit out of me. I was not expecting it, and everyone was just dying on the floor. I'm like, yeah. I mean, I'll be honest. That scared the hell out of me. Like I'm not used to something like that. Uh, yeah, definitely. No, I, I that's why. I, but again, it's why I have fun at this event. Um, you know, I mean, there's secret bars, all this fun stuff. You know, the mazes are very well detailed. You know, the talent, all you guys, fantastic. Um, And I I made it my mission that this is going to be a reoccurring event that I attend every year uh, because I had such a fun time uh, just going through and and seeing everything, all the different themes and and everything that I I was just blown away of how good it was. Uh, And and talking with, you know, I got we've had the opportunity to talk with um, Sam, who plays Scary Mary. Uh, and, and the captain himself, uh, you know, just talking with them, you know, it was just to hear them coming up and, and their backstories, you know, and stuff like that. I, I was just so blown away to find out Sam actually was partially responsible for, for you know, not, if not majority responsible for helping create that character, Scary Mary. You know, yeah. that's just that's that blows me away. Going into, you know, characters. What about your characters? How did you guys come up with the ideas for your characters? Uh, for me, um, when I went in, I was pretty much given, Hey, you're going to be a clown and come up with, you know, and I grew up with, you know, Joe working at knots and I hear him telling me like, Hey, we've always had to make a backstory for our characters. So that's what I did is I made a backstory for my character. Um, I pretty much made it up as me and Killis. Um, he was my twin. 
um, we pretty much escaped on the Queen Mary and hid in the basement or like the the very the burners on the very very bottom floor of the Queen Mary to escape from where we were you know from and when we got to Long Beach and we you know actually like sat you know were shipped there or whatever um that evil came in and he was just looking on the bottom of the ship to see what he can find for the circus him and the ringmaster and they came in and found us and he at that point he was like all right these are going to be my kids like i'm going to change their names you know i'm going to change their names to looney and killis and what we're going to do is we're going to take them and we're going to we're going to run the circus with the ringmaster and that's how i created my story I love so. hearing that stuff, man. I mean, if you guys can write like graphic novels or just make movies, <laughs> I would legit, I would invest in buying them and reading them and watching them. I, I, <laughs> every time I hear a backstory, like a movie idea clicks, I'm like, boom, mm -hmm. that's a great short mm -hmm. film idea. <laughs> uh, for me, um, I tried to make the story, I tried to like take it from something that actually kind of happened. Right. Um, so because uh, my first year I was in the maze and I was specifically in the maze lullaby, um, you know, like Mary's a lot of the time, like Mary's doing her thing and there's lots of toys in the maze. Right. Um, and I knew, I also like, this is going to sound weird, but I, I kind of based my character off of like movement and I knew what kind of movement I liked and I associated that movement with like a dancer. And so I was like, how can I connect these two things? And I thought of you know those music boxes the you, you like yeah yeah yeah. and they make little noise and yeah. then it, there's like a little ballerina on top right so i was like i could be one of those little ballerina music boxes and lullaby or like one of mary's toys that was brought to life like a little demonic energy put in there and then like she finds cherry finds her way to be a part of the the, the team right and and, you know, there's all like weird little ways to like interconnect with the characters and stuff. But that's like the that's the main storyline of Cherry. That's I mean, how I did that. That is like those music boxes. I mean, those are like just terrifying as it is for me. Uh, I watch yeah. <laughs> I mean, watching a lot of horror films. One that comes to mind. The first thing is obviously The Conjuring. Um, that was one of the pieces in the Warren Museum that you think you see in Annabelle Comes Home more. And yeah, it is just terrifying so for you to base a character around that i mean i think that's pretty damn smart honestly yeah. um so you know i have to give a shout out to my boy uh my man mr scott dieterman um, <laughs> that guy uh love him i know he's watching these podcasts um, the bald head Mr. Clean. <laughs> Mr. Clean. Mr. Clean. Oh, he's gonna, you're going to get so many angry messages from him when this podcast comes out. He's no, going to text. He knows, he knows that's what I call him. Ever since ever since I met him, I was like, you look like Mr. Clean. Your name is Mr. Clean. Um, we call him Mr. Clean or we call him the pebble. Like, you yeah. know, the rock, but right. it's smaller. <laughs> uh, you know, we, we've had him on the show, man. And, and uh, you know, I, I know he was uh, one of the, uh, or he was your guys's. Was he your guys's talent manager? So Street manager. He actually, he actually wasn't my manager. Two thousand sixteen, okay. we had someone else. But two thousand seventeen is when he came in. Right. And he's pretty much the slider manager, right. along with Streets. He's like Streets is his whole management that he has to take over. Right. So. Yeah, we uh, we talked with him. Sometime last year, we're gonna get him on the show again pretty soon. But uh, for him to go out and and cre create, um, and I and I hope to God after all this stuff gets better, uh, his slider dynamics program. I think that's a really cool thing for people who want to really get into this um, this form of art, as I like to call it. Um, <laughs> just to really do it properly, you know, the, the exercises and stuff. Cause I don't think a lot of people realize sliding is more than just putting on some knee pads and going out there and doing it. No, it's like oh, yeah. stretching, you know, mm. being in, in good shape, you know, just, you know, having the stamina and stuff for it. Cause you're going to be not only sliding on your knees, 
your hands and everything, but you're going to be running, all that stuff. So you got to really be prepared for it. Um, so for him to start a program to do that, I think is amazing. And uh, I've heard some good stories with him at uh, Queen Mary. I've heard some good stories with him at Knott's. Uh, the guy's just, I like to call him a legend. Uh, yeah, he, he he's, like he's, <laughs> he's definitely like a blessing to this team, like, he he came over and he you know he actually got down to the nitty gritty when it came to us sliding like right. he trained us and Lily like everything we all thought we knew like <laughs> it was out the door you know like yeah. some of it was yeah. the same but he pretty much was like you guys are all gonna get your asses in shape we're gonna do be doing CrossFit we're gonna be doing this like and it honestly like it helped the whole team so much 2019 right like I've never seen like it was crazy how much energy we had from doing all that kind of stuff like the actual proper training for it right no yeah. he, he knows man he knows his stuff man he's a good he's a good guy um hoping when all this ends again i want to get i want to grab him a, i want to grab a beer and, and chill with him and just pick his he mind oh, he, he'd definitely be down for that we all we all <laughs> should we all should get together if this ever ends just get a beer just have man a beer and... just and just shoot the shit um yep. I got a few fan questions uh, earlier today on Instagram. I threw up that we were going to be doing uh, interviews with you guys all weekend. Throughout the week, I will be still putting up uh, for each uh, individuals that come on. Uh, but the first two questions uh, come from Bronx15. And he Joker. asked, <laughs> I knew you'd know oh that God, name. <laughs> I wonder where that name is from. <laughs> Uh, he goes, uh, and this is for both of you. What makes you uh, come back year after year? Uh, definitely the scares and the people. I think the scares give me that, like, I can get my aggression out on everyone. <laughs> and it sort of helps me relax throughout the year and, like, de-stress. And then all the people, like, I couldn't think, like, David. David is such an amazing boss. Right. So is Dieterman, you know, like. I couldn't thank them enough, you know, and then just the whole team of how close the team is, how close of, of a family we are. Right. Like I've made some friendships that I know like would last a lifetime, even, you know, outside of haunt, like we all still hang out on a daily basis. We all still talk to each other, you know, and it's just like, without them, like, I don't think I would be the person I am today without the people that I've met on the team and I've helped train and I, you know, I'm co- coaching with you know and like co-patch member with like these people like have changed my world for like such a better place that i think that's the reason why i go back is just the friendships i love hearing that that's the reason why we i think that's the reason why we all continue to go back guests yeah. and people you know just the friendships and the and the community man it's a great community what about you definitely Taylor? yeah yeah i i agree with Looney on two things the people definitely like um you do such like weird stuff together and like also like when you make those like bonding experiences when you're scaring like it's a totally different it's a totally different game um and like definitely wally and like Dieterman and like it's just it really is a family and the second thing that i absolutely agree with is it is like a weird form of therapy you can do weird stuff that you cannot do normally. If you go and scream at a person regularly, normal life, they will, you, you could get in trouble. But in this situation, they pay you to do it. So it's great. <laughs> like, yeah. my job, so you know. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, it's just, I, the experience, like, I don't know, the experience of scaring, it's, it's just like, it's so much fun. And I didn't realize how much I missed it. We've been doing like these Taco Truck Tuesday events and I remember the first time that I did it, it was during the time that we were supposed to be having season. And we haven't been sliding even at like where we usually do, like the rink because of COVID. Right. Like I haven't been pads in such a long time. And just the feeling of sliding and the feeling of scaring people, I was like, I completely forgot how it felt. And it's just, it's like, it's like an adrenaline rush, honestly. Right. It's it's really fun. It's just it's a whole it's a whole different world. It's great. So I'm gonna I'm a, I'll, I'll say this right now. I ever win the lottery, I'll just buy you guys a warehouse, and then you can make your own sliding ring, so you don't worry about yes. worry about COVID or Dang. anything. You know, you just, yes. just go slide anytime you want. You know, we'll get the floors all good, and that goes for 
You know, if you want to invite friends out, anything, you know, you guys want to have a little audience. That would be fantastic. <laughs> I know. I win the lottery, man. I, I, there's a lot of things I'm going to do. Guarantee <laughs> it. I think that goes for all of us. If we all win the lottery, there's so many things we're going to be doing in this world. Oh, um, yeah. No, I, but, it, you know, you guys brought up, you know, obviously the friendships and stuff. And that was something that I really missed um, this haunt season. You know, it, it was a little bit harder to get together with your friends to do anything, especially because mm -hmm. everything was either drive through or kind of really difficult, like displays or something. Um, there, fortunate enough, there was a few times I got to go twice this year through mm -hmm. like actual walkthrough mazes which at, at home haunts, which was really fun. And I got to meet up with a few friends and, and do it very safely and everything. So, I mean, that was fun, but I, I do miss that atmosphere. I miss the, I miss, you know, there's a certain sense that when you go into these events, you just, the smells, you know, the, the, the looks, mm -hmm. the, you know, everything like I can speak for everyone. I think I miss the smell of fog more than anything. Me too. Oh, I, <laughs> I didn't even think of that. But yeah, it's like it brings back memories. It's like, oh, yeah. oh I love it. <laughs> like uh, when I went to the Taste of Halloween event this past year, they at night they throw on the fog and I just stood there and inhaled. I don't care how bad <laughs> it was for me. I just inhaled so much because it smelled so good. Yeah. You were sitting there and you were just like, I'm just wafting it all in. Like, it's just <laughs> yep. there. <laughs> just, just, just taking it all in because I, I legit just missed all of that. Like, you know, I mean, I go to like, I go to like, I go to a lot, a lot of these events. I go like to Horror Nights. I miss the freaking flame towers. Like I miss, you know, yeah. chain. I miss the smell. I, I luckily I got to smell chainsaw gas this year. Ironically, I miss, oh, yeah. I love that scent too. I've never heard that 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 said. Luckily, I got to smell chainsaw gas. <laughs> I know, right? I, you know, it's like I don't think I should be smelling gas. It's probably bad for me. But I mean, just the fact that like when you go to some of these events, they got chainsaws and just that smell, you're like. Oh my god, I, I'm home. It, it just smells great. Yeah, definitely. Um, I miss, like, if you went on opening nights of these events, I miss, like, for some reason, I could still smell how fresh the paint was or something on, like, mm -hmm. yeah, it's just the weird little things that I, I miss this year. Um, but I definitely miss, you know, just the, just seeing the community. Uh, obviously, with, you know, one of the things I like doing, too, is going to Midsummer Scream, and that was, you know, sadly canceled last year, and I just I miss that, you know I mean? But I feel like going forward, I think we're going to be better. We're going to get better, and we're going to get out of this together. We're going to see the light at the end of the tunnel. That's a, that is a promise and a guarantee. That is not, that is not a, a road of fiction right there. Um, but, I mean, yeah, and, uh, I mean, it, there's just a lot that 2020 was an interesting year for haunt season. Um, yeah, it was. And uh, I, I'm glad I got to do the things that I did. Um, because much like you guys having a, a, a therapy of scaring and, and liking to do that, my therapy is getting scared <laughs> and I like to have really? my, That's interesting. my heart racing. Like I, I love watching heart. Like last night I just played, um, the Resident Evil 8 demo. Yeah. I'm a huge Resident Evil fan. And, uh, when I saw there was a demo release for it, I was like, all right, I got to play this. And I was playing through it. My heart was racing. I had the room dark and I was screaming like a little girl. Because there was some stuff in there that I was just terrified of. So, I mean, I love playing horror games. I love um, watching horror films, horror TV shows, anything that can get me scared. I love doing it. Um, Definitely. Except watching The Exorcist at 3 a.m. 3 a.m. in the morning. I can't do that. That's fair. <laughs> I can't do that. Early. And, like, I think Sam just did a, a cosplay of The Exorcist. And I, I was scrolling through yep. Instagram last night. And I saw that. And I clicked out. I'm like, all right, I'm done with Instagram for tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Um, another question I got here, this, fr this one comes from Delaney. She says, does Cherry love her little sister? Cherry does love her little sister. <laughs> I love her so much. She's going to watch this later and she's going to be like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> thank you, Delaney. Uh, this last one comes from Gabby Art, my dude. Uh, and she goes, uh, anything for creating a haunt slash slider character, like any advice you can give to her? For creating a character that's a good question uh my best advice um would be make sure you take into consideration if you are going to be sliding especially costumes mm -hmm. costumes are a big play in things especially as a slider like for me and cherry it was really easy to get used to sliding in a tutu Especially ones with like a ch it's shorter in the front, longer in the back. Yeah, right. trail. Um, like some people can't do it. Like I wouldn't be able to slide with the dress on. 
like an actual dress on. I would feel too uncomfortable, especially when it came to Dark Harbor, because there is a lot of people who get too drunk and touchy. Um, so I try to base, you know, where I have some kind of shorts and tights on underneath whatever I'm wearing. Um, so I would say for costumes, doing it that way. And then for character wise, I would definitely say like incorporate yourself into your character because it's going to be the easiest thing to do to transition into it. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, I, so it's hard creating a character or sometimes it feels really overwhelming because you're like, where do I start? Like I, it's weird. It's like, there's so much creativity like options that like you get overwhelmed and kind of like frozen or paralyzed on how to and the best advice I can give is kind of how I did it which is a little bit what Looney said like connect it to yourself connect it to things like I connected it to like I I actually was in lullaby so like you know like real things around you um connect it to like other characters if you can and create a story like a dynamic or something like that and one of the best tips when it comes to creating any story, I think, is don't think about it like you're starting from scratch. Think about it like you're exploring the concept. Like it's already there and you're just coming upon these ideas mm -hmm. um, so that it isn't as like overwhelming. Right. Especially when it comes to broad topics such yeah. as a clown, because a clown yeah. can go so many different ways. Yeah. You know, you can go like the insane asylum. You can go like a rodeo clown, like how Lone Star is. You can go so many different way with things. And once you sort of have a set idea on what sort of direction you're going from that broad idea, it'll definitely help. Also, I think um, a, another good thing is like, think about things that you really like. Like I like dancing and ballerina stuff. So like, that's what I did. And like, you know, um, and all that jazz or like, you know, certain people have certain niches that they like and they incorporated it with their character. Beautiful. I mean, that's what I always love hearing to hear the advice that other people give to each other. I mean, I think creating a character too. Um, I would say for me, because like I, I like writing and stuff is always just a fun thing to do. Getting into like backstories and really doing all that and then uh, incorporating a costume that fits your well-being um, mm -hmm. perfectly. It's something that you're comfortable in, something that you know you're going to be comfortable in. You're going to walk around with probably for like eight hours and <laughs> run and slide and, and get dirty in and just just yeah. no, just wear I, I, yeah wear something comfy if i can suggest anything that's what i've always seen is Definitely. people just wearing something comfy um, yep anything that makes you comfortable two questions i'm going to ask before we log off the two probably one of them is going to be a hard question for a lot of guests usually but the second one i want to hear some some answers from you guys if you guys can work any other haunt uh besides dark harbor which haunt would it be and why I would say knots. Knots. Definitely. I would definitely go to knots just because of the fact that they originated sliding. And just to go over there and have a chance of being able to sort of make my own character, whether it's a clown on Ghost Town, whatever it is, just doing something like that and getting the feel of being there for at least, you know, at least a year, even if it's not sliding. Right. Like getting that feel, I think, would fulfill me just because the fact that obviously I look up to the people like Dieterman and Slider One and stuff like that because they created sliding and stuff but I do also like it for the character wise and just the way everything looks so I would definitely go knots. If you were to work knots what scare zone in specific? Ghost Town. Ghost Town? The OG. Ghost Town or Carnival. Those OG. would be my two. OGs right there. What about you Cherry? Uh, hmm. So, so, um, may I state that in comparison to most people on the team and most people in the hot community, I'm still very new to like a lot of the stuff right. in, in comparison to that. Right. Um, but I've been to a few of us. I've been to 17th door. I've been to knots. I've been to <clears throat> six flags, which was really cool because I saw them when they first started, like, or when they were kind of sort of the zombies and now like, oh my God, they've done amazing. I, we saw their slider show. 19. Yeah, 2019. and it, I was inspired by it. It was really cool. Nice. But I, out of all of the ones that I've been to, I think I would also say Knots for the reason that, like, 
it ha it's like kind of going off of what Lainey said it's like the classics in a way it's like you know like the origin and it's it it never gets old because it has like that sentimental value to everyone right it's like the heart of all the haunts yeah 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 so that that's that and I, rem I remember going to um and it was it was just really cool it had more of like a darker spookier vibe to it there queen has like a lot of lights and everything's really cool and like there's it's it's very gorgeous and aesthetically appealing but like um certain parts especially ghost town has like that really creepy like um intense vibe to it i no, i agree i, I i've sat on in ghost town many nights just watching people work and it is just I think that's... I love that you do that, that you watch, that you like actually watch some people, <laughs> some guests just like walk around, but like you were like, no, no, like I want to see what's going on here. This is, this is really cool. We had a, we had like two benches. Um, in the beginning we had one on like the main street of ghost town and then like it just started getting too crowded. So we found somewhere else that was like less traffic and out of the way. Uh, most nights my co host would actually fall asleep on. So that was fun. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I, I couldn't, I can't sit on Ghost Town. I definitely cannot sit on Ghost Town. I can go sit on Carnival and take pictures. Right. Ghost Town, I will not sit because Merrick will always find me, and I am <laughs> deathly terrified of Merrick, and I run. Merrick's like, the man, though, man. <laughs> I run. I am, like, shitting bricks, and I take off. Like, I'm in Carnival before my friends even turn the corner. Like, <laughs> no. Like, you see these train tracks? You can't go past there. <laughs> exactly. That's why I run over there. <laughs> uh, no, I, I, I've, yeah, I, I like uh, doing that and um, just kind of sitting down and watch people work and just to see everyone's different style. Because um, everybody uh, that we've talked to and that I've met have bring, they bring in a, a unique style that it is different from other people's, which I like really, I, I like go, I go above and beyond to just watching people scare, but I like seeing how they scare and, and just to, just to see their styles and everything. And like I said, everyone has a unique style. Um, mm -hmm. it, I think it's my goal to just go to other haunts multiple nights and just do that. Just sit down and just watch people you know really cool. work because i think it's just it's just it's fascinating. so interesting yeah it's fascinating to see what people can do well, what are especially some when oh sorry go ahead especially with us you know even as a different scare actor from a different park like to go to these parks and even sit down like especially in carnival you know it's other clowns we're clowns they're clowns yeah. and just to see how they're acting compared to us it's so interesting man Shout out to Carnival, by the way. I think mm -hmm. that is probably one of the, in my opinion, it looks like one of the hardest scare zones to work because of all the light compared to uh -huh. like Ghost Town, Hollow, and, and Forsaken Lake. They yeah. are like, they have to be super creative, and I give them props. They get super creative with scaring. Them. Definitely. I wanted to ask, uh, like, what are some of the like differences that you've seen in scaring since you watch so much? Honestly, everyone brings something new to the table. I've seen, I've seen it all. I've seen someone hide in a tree. I've seen someone <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> hide in a bush. I've seen someone. Uh, I, I've heard stories of someone. I, I don't know if you've ever seen them, but at Knotts, they have these rubber maids that the custodians walk around with, and they put trash in them. It was a brand new one. Actually, it's this is my uh, my buddy Aaron. Um, he did this. He hopped in the rubber maid. They parked it right in the middle of Ghost Town and then jumped out at people. So I love it. I've seen That's that. Great. <laughs> yeah, I, I've heard I've heard stories of that. I've seen I, I've seen people like there's this one guy that was just nuts with how he he was scaring with his knee pads and everything. He would do this crawl move where he would like bang his hands and his knee pads on the floor. So like it just sounded like just like loud like tap dancing yeah but he would like fucking crawl on all fours and just crawl out to people and it was the like the strangest shit i've ever seen in oh my you're life. making me miss it um, <laughs> definitely I, i've just seen people be super flexible with it um yeah i think that's the that's the thing uh people the way people scream i've seen some very like high-pitched ones some very low-pitched like just I've seen about a lot of things, and every time I go to different haunts, it's just it's fun. I think that's why specifically I like going to like haunts like Queen Mary uh, and Knotts, for an example, because they really have the freedom to do what they please and how they scare compared to like an event like Horror Nights where you're basically stuck in one zone and you're one character 
And yeah. you kind of have to work with that. No disrespect to any of those, because I, I, I can promise or guarantee that those all those people are probably very talented characters as well. But I, I like these events because you guys have the freedom to do and scare how you want. Mm-hmm. And as long as you get a good scare and you guys have a technique that works, I think that's the, where the creative creativity comes from, and I like that a lot. So I think Definitely. when Queen Mary comes back, I'm going to have to sit a couple nights there. I will buy it. Please do. A bunch of tickets just to go uh, a couple nights. Um, Jack and Coke, just sit there and enjoy it. And that's the way to do it. That's the way. That's my favorite drink. I love that drink. Um, last question, usually the hardest question for a lot of people, or it might be the easiest question for you. What is your favorite horror movie? Ooh. It's always huh. the hardest one. I know. Mm-hmm. There's a lot of great ones out there. <laughs> Choose what genre, what subgenre. Oh. Mine would definitely be the uh, the Silence of the Lambs. I don't know nice. if you would consider it a horror movie, it's a horror but movie. I mean, no, it, it was it's based, definitely. you know, on Hannibal Lecter, and that yeah. was actually one of the first ones that I've ever seen. And so, just watching that, it got me like into scary stuff and then recently i've been uh i've been watching a uh, halloween because it's uh, my boyfriend's favorite movie and Halloween's so great. he sort of got me obsessed with it because i've actually never seen it up to like about like i would say maybe a year ago i've never seen any of them till we went to go see the uh the last one actually the last one that came out in theaters right so i'm gonna i'm gonna go on a limb here and say when it comes time to watch I don't know how your boyfriend feels about Halloween 3. But Halloween 3, as much crap as it gets, don't look at it as a Halloween film. Just look at it as Season of the Witch. It's a solid film. Okay. Um, it's very different. I, I can tell you right now, no Michael Myers at all. <laughs> um, but it's a freaking great film. It's a really sinister film, and it's 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 good for when it came out. So, um, But I wish you luck for the rest of the films. <laughs> Thanks. Uh, yeah, that's a good one. Oh, and Silence of yeah. Lambs. By the way, Clarice, are you going to see that when it comes out? They're making a show about yes. Silence of the Lambs. Oh, yes, I want to see that yes. so bad. I think CBS or NBC is doing it. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah, one of the two. So that's going to be cool. What about you, Cherry? What's your favorite horror film? Uh, I hate this question. <laughs> um, are we like going for like? specifically like terrifying movies or whatever just you consider that, horror like, whatever you like i know okay so this movie isn't like spooky super spooky at least not to me but like it's like it's a movie that's like always been there and i watch it like i watched it on halloween and multiple times throughout how like the uh october but i really like beetlejuice beetlejuice it's cute yeah we got matching beetlejuice shirts on <laughs> beetlejuice is the man I yeah. I love I, so for starters I'll watch anything with Michael Keaton. Um, I love Michael Keaton. I love his Batman. I think he's probably one of the best bi- live action Batmans ever. Beetlejuice is just that role was beautiful, and I'm hoping one day they do a sequel. But everything that guy does, I watch. He was in Spider. They're supposed to be making a number two. Yes, and Winona Ryder and and Michael Keaton are so on board. They want to do it. I know that's honestly my favorite movie. Beetlejuice like all time is, favorite movie. is so good. Um, and I, there's so much that I love about that film. Uh, I, I think even for my podcast intro, we even mm. have the, we, we have Beetlejuice saying it's showtime. And then it comes awesome. into the podcast. Like I had That's a great, podcast. I mean, cause That's I mean, great. he has so many great one liners in that film. That's just my favorite part is when he, when he like, when they're asking who he is and then he like starts talking normal and then he just, he goes into full Michael Keaton and then he goes in like, talks about like the freaking he talks about watching the exorcist every single time and it just gets more hysterical every then he goes into beetlejuice like it's great and then in 2019 when they had like the 80s throwback night at horror nights i like have footage of me singing another one bites the dust with the guy who played beetlejuice and it was just oh my just god so that's fun. great um so i'm hoping they do a beetlejuice too but yes beetlejuice is indeed i don't care what anyone says it's a horror movie it it's was great. going to come to horror nights last year and yeah, I'm hoping if they do an event, they bring it back because I really want to see that damn maze. Um, Definitely. Ladies, this has been an amazing start to the Queen Mary Sliders takeover. Um, 
I learned so much about the event, and I'm excited when this event returns to go back and see you ladies work. That is going to be a fun time. Um, and I can't wait. I'm excited. Thank can't you. wait to have you come. Yeah. I will be there. With just look, Jack and, uh, Jack and, and Coke. Coke. Just look for yeah. the guy with the Jack and Coke. And, <laughs> you know, uh, I'll be there. We'll come over and drop a few tokens or whatever. Just throw tokens at you. Throw just, marshmallows yeah, or token. something. Yeah. I don't know. You know what? I, I, would be, <laughs> I would be very happy with that because, you know, my goal, my goal one of these days is to hit every single secret bar I can. Well, we can so. help you with that's, we got you. That's perfect. <laughs> you know, some may, I I may not have the money for a drink in every single one, but you know, it'd just be cool to go in. You know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, no, yeah, I, thank I, you. I'm so excited. Uh, I, I'm yeah. praying that we have a better 2021. Um, Please. I want to thank uh, for the first episode, obviously, for all the Queen Mary Sliders that are going to be on the show in the next coming weeks. Uh, this is uh, a cool collab right here, and uh, I'm excited. I always love interviewing different uh, scare actors and just hearing about their stories uh, because, like I always say, outside of scaring, they, they, these, they, they are people, and they have um, they have people lives too. They, you know, so they're, they're real people. So people lives versus monster lives. Before you you ball up a fist and, and hit them when you're drunk, just think about it. They are people too. Okay. Thank and, you. And just put the fist down. <laughs> Um, but thank you guys for not only, uh, doing what you do at dark Harbor, but helping bring the nightmares to life, uh, every single year for Halloween. Um, you guys do amazing work and I cannot wait to, again, see you guys hopefully this year or sometime soon. Really thank you so much for having us. Thank oh, you. Yeah. If you guys like this episode, of course, leave a like, uh, leave the like, hit the like, I can't talk right now. Hit the like button, <laughs> uh, and leave some comments down. For uh, Looney and Cherry, let them know. Show them your love. Um, also, you guys want to plug in any social media they can find you guys on? Uh, my Instagram is at QMDH underscore Looney. So if anyone wants to look up that, then yeah. Cool. My Instagram is goddess.of.galaxies. And I also have a TikTok with the same username. And sometimes um, I will post cherry TikToks or sometimes the really cool videos that get made of the slider team there. So yeah, there have fun. Same. <laughs> same for my TikTok. Yes. Check them out. And TikTok, man. I'm on TikTok every day. So I'm definitely going to check them out. <laughs> That's what I do when I'm bored at work. I'm just like, I need to go, go on TikTok, see what's going on there. And most of, <laughs> most of my videos are Call of Duty videos of freaking people failing oh my God. in war zones. So oh, my God. That's what's fun. And then the other half are <laughs> cooking videos. So uh, I'm, I need to spice up my TikTok life. <laughs> <laughs> but thank you, ladies, so much for coming on. If you got, Like I said, if you guys are new to the channel, hit that subscribe button and that bell notification will be where every time we put up a new video. And tune in next week for another podcast with the Sliders, I will see you guys real soon. Thank you. Bye.